Hey, Viking fans, is the Jefferson cousin era over? I'm going to talk about that and more next in three, two, one. Gather around, Skull Brothers and Sisters. This is Skull World, brought to you by Minnesota Sports Talk. I'm your host, Dave. You can follow me on Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at Skull World. Make sure you hit subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Tell me what you think the future holds for the Jefferson Cousins duo. I'm going to talk about it next, but first of all, I want to talk about TJ Hawkinson. Finish the season's 95 receptions, 960 yards, five TDs. He doesn't score a lot of TDs over the years. So um, I thought that would change this year. Obviously, it didn't. Uh, but he got injured. Now, I did a little bit of research. By research, it means I spent 15 minutes online looking at medical diagnoses of people with ACL and MCL tears, both combined. And not the greatest. Okay, now keep in mind, he's an athlete. He's going to be training. He's going to be trying to get back. So his regiment is going to be excelled over someone like you or me who got injured at work or something. They they will follow the regiment. They will work hard. They'll get it done. What I saw anywhere from six months to two years. But um, I think it's more like um, this situation. What I read is that after six months, every month after that, you will be less and less likely to re-tear the ACL. Um, I don't know, but it didn't say anything about MCL, but re-tear the ACL. So six months puts you in June, right? Or close to June. Every month after that, July, August, now you're at nine months. Um, so June, July, August. That gives us the nine-month window that seemed to be like a very good probability of a return. Now, obviously, we had a, a dude, um, Adrian Peterson, who returned. I don't remember if he had the ACL and MCL. I don't think so. This is, a, I think, a different cat. Nine months, I think, or later. That puts at the end of August, September, somewhere around there. Now, that gives... Here's my thinking. He's going to sit out September, and then we'll have him for October and hopefully the rest of the season. That, I think, is a probability I would envision, just because we'll be a little more careful, give him an extra month. We'll see. We'll see how he is in the offseason. We'll see how current techniques are. Um, we're learning this for the first time, really, with a guy – of this caliber coming back that, you know, a tight end coming back from an ACL and MCL. Um, it wasn't the greatest return for Teddy Bridgewater. He had some other situations though. This, this we'll see. We'll see. Now we've extended this guy. We've gotten a, you know, we re, re and we extend his contract. So there's a lot riding on getting TJ Hawkinson back. Uh, I hope a speedy recovery. Now, for me to compete next year, we're going to need him. We're also going to need someone to throw him the ball. Right now, Nick Mullins and Jaron Hall are not the answer. Kirk Cousins, they're both under contract next year. I don't mind Nick Mullins as our backup quarterback. Jaron Hall got a shot last night and just withered in the lights. I don't know what was happening, but he looked to me just like Josh Dobbs. He was late in his dropbacks. He was slow. He faded. He didn't deliver the ball on time. And it was even the ones that were open, he was inaccurate to them throwing the ball. It was like he was nervous. He reminded me of Josh Dobbs um, when he was playing, his, especially his last two games. Or, you know, just the times where he didn't look good. This is what Josh Dobbs looked like to me. I don't, I didn't notice a difference. But hey, I now, does he have a future in the league? Sure. Jaron Hall has a future in the league. 
Um, I didn't expect that from him. I expected better. I think we will see better when there's more seasoning. But you could tell the difference between making checks at the line and us getting ate up by the blitz, uh, us not picking up the blitz. Just you could tell the difference between a Jaron Hall and a and a Nick Mullins running the offense. You just can see that. Nick Mullins can run an offense. We can see that. He doesn't make necessarily bad choices. He just does not have an arm to make that throw. He he thinks he can. He throws it. It doesn't work out. That was a you know the Lions um, and Justin Jefferson at the end of the game. Uh, honestly, almost all four of those picks were not bad decisions. He just can't make that throw. He doesn't have the arm strength or the uh, you know or the rhythm with the player the you know, the familiar familiarity with the player to make that throw. So he, he's a gunslinger. He throws a, f- a few bad balls and that's why he throws a lot of picks. So, but Nick Mullins can be our backup. We have him for one more year. I feel okay with that. Who's going to be our starter? Well, the college draft is not until April. Free agency is before that. You have a coach and a GM who currently are not in the playoffs and they don't like to be that they don't like to have no plan uh they don't like to have uncertainty we may pick in the top 10 but our best choices may be gone by the time we pick and we may not have as much ammunition to move up to get our guy and in that case do we even want to start a rookie does o'connell want to start a rookie does Quasi Udafa Mensa want to start a rookie. I don't think so. I don't think they want that to happen. Now, do you have like a can't miss quarterback at the top of the draft? No, I don't think any year's going to say you can't have a can't miss guy. Now, some guys seem to be, you know, they seem to be can't miss guys. But hey, do you chance that? Well, the safest bet is bringing a veteran back. And what do you know? We happen to have one that's off a contract who's coming off what was amazing year, probably would have been front runner for the MVP race with the numbers that he has. And he was bringing us back 69 and a half percent completion percentage. One of his highest 77.5 average, one of his highest 2,331 yards on track to crush his, to beat his highest. 18 TDs, also on pace to beat his best, and five picks, four of which were either were not his fault. The one pick that was a pick six was his fault. The other four were stripped out of his hands or of the receiver's hands or, or bobbled up in the air for the defender to pick. So he was having an amazing year, and there's no doubts about it. You can I'll go to my grave on that one. So we do have that. Now, what I would envision, it would be a two-year contract and maybe a lower salary than, uh, than, than market, but with incentives that are easily attainable. Um, I can see that happening, meaning if he gets injured, we don't have to pay all that money, but if he plays the whole season, those are easily attainable to where, like, his, like say, 4,000 yards or 25 touchdowns or make the playoffs. Those would be at easily attainable um, for him to make his $35, $40 million market type of contract. And, and to be straight, 45 is like top 10 quarterback. Well, he was easily a top 10 quarterback this year. He was top five, top three, top two at the time. He got hurt. So just saying that, you're probably bringing him back, most likely. And you're probably getting them for a two-year deal, probably not fully guaranteed, maybe lower initial salary, but easily attainable. That would still affect your salary cap because I think if a, if a, if something is easily attainable, it will count against your salary cap. I don't know how they determine that. I heard that one time. It's stuck in my head. I'm spewing it back to you. I'd have to go look up to be for sure. But. The guy that benefits the most from this is Justin Jefferson. What does he want? What does he want? He wants to win. He he cares about his legacy. 
He was a killing it under Kirk Cousins. He was on track to over 2,000 yards. Look at this. This is some. This is a career year for some people. 56 receptions, 882 yards, five TDs. This was a Stefan Diggs rookie year, sophomore year type of production for a whole season. This was in eight game, or like seven or eight games. Hell, I don't even know. Seven games, eight games. I don't know. It wasn't that many games. Justin Jefferson benefited from Kirk Cousins. He said NFL records. He said another one for the most yards in four years in four years of a person's career. Justin Jefferson benefits from getting a competent who has played elite. Honestly, the past two years, he's a top five quarterback last year in stats. Uh, yards and touchdowns and won 13 games. Well, he's a stat pusher. We won 13 games with Kirk Cousins. So, hey, now this year we were coming back. We won three in a row. We beat San Francisco, best team in the NFC, with Kirk Cousins, no Justin Jefferson. We have a shot to make something special. We have Jordan Addison. Um, Ty Chandler's looking like a pretty good running back. We got um, – we got uh, our even our set our third and fourth receivers can make plays. We we don't have to we don't have to worry about our offense. Um, now keep in mind our offensive line played better. It played better under Nick Mullins. It played better under Kirk Cousins. It did not play good under Dobbs or Jaron Hall. They don't. They do not have the consistent footwork or drop back like Mullins and Kirk Cousins do, they run the offense much better. It was visually evident the difference between seeing these two guys play compared to uh, Josh Dobbs and Jaron Hall. But, hey, I had said Justin Jefferson would benefit from the three backups from Nick Mullins more than any of them, and it shows. And I am right, and I'm right about this. Justin Jefferson would benefit from Kirk Cousins coming back and what and how do I know that how do I know that let's talk about it let's just listen to Justin Jefferson let's listen to him I really think it goes to show the rest of the world who the ter uh, the type of player Kirk is um, at the end of the day this is a tough league um, and um, not everybody is meant for this job you know uh, so it it, it it's tough not having eight out there, the 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 uh, the captain that he is, the leader that he is, um, and he's a, a great player. The leader that he is, the captain that he is, he is a great player. So the thought that Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson doesn't want anything to do, the whole narrative that he's looking to the draft Wants that sexy quarterback. He's watching college football. No, he he says not everybody can play. And if anything was evident, he saw the college kid come in with the mobility, the strong arm, the accurate arm, and he folded. He folded. And then you got the Nick Mullins. He knows that he's not Kirk Cousins. He goes on to talk about Nick Mullins as a good quarterback, too. And this was after after the loss against um, the game before this last one. This was after our um, our eighth loss. So that being said, Justin Jefferson was is wanting the guy back that gives us the best chance to win, and he's looking at somebody a free agent out there. Maybe he likes Russell Wilson. Do you? They that we pan that as one of the worst. Um, trades in NFL history. Now, now we got Viking fans wanting Russell Wilson. Sure, he's going to be out there. Do you want Kirk? Do you want Russell Wilson? Uh, Russell Wilson. Yeah, he could be okay. But Kirk Cousins spent two years in this offense and was running it amazingly. We just got hurt by turnovers, mostly fumbles, and a lot of drops early in the year. He is running this offense as good as it could be. You can tell the difference. You bring another guy in to have to learn the offense. We're resetting. We're having to have a guy learn it all over again. I'm all about bringing Kirk back for two, one year, two years, um, and have and if we draft a quarterback, no problem. 
Just have him sit. We just saw Jordan Love kick our ass. He sat for three years. Let's we can do the same thing. Hell, Aaron Rodgers sat for three years. We we can do the same thing. Okay. Let's get our guy for the future. Let's get our guy for now with a team that can that could win now, which we do have. We're gonna see Justin Jefferson, Kirk Cousins, definitely in 2024. Book it. Skull Vikes. Cue the music. <laughs>